Hello and welcome as we continue our mini Bible studies this week in preparation for the second Sunday of Easter, April 11, 2021. And today we will be looking at our second reading for Sunday, which comes from the first letter of John, starting at chapter 1, verse 1, and going through chapter 2, verse 2. So first let me share the uh, introduction to the reading, then the reading itself, and then share with you some reflections that I've gathered on today's reading. The opening of this letter serves as a reality check. The reality of God is light, but our confessed reality has been sin. God cleanses us from our sinful reality through Christ's death so that we live in fellowship with Christ and walk in God's light. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father that was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A meme, which is an image with some writing in it, that I have seen on Facebook reads something like this. The gospel is less about how to get into the kingdom of heaven after you die and more about how to live in the kingdom of heaven before you die. And that's attributed to uh, theologian and pastor Dallas Willard. A key note in all of this Sunday's readings is the capacity of the risen Christ to draw individuals into authentic life together. In the first reading from Acts chapter 4, the power of Jesus' resurrection graces the church with an uncommonly open heart, out of which every material need is satisfied. Psalm 133 accents the joy of the community, how good and sweet it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. 1 John chapter 1 and going through chapter 2 is a candid yet encouraging meditation on life in a community whose Lord is Jesus. Then going on to the gospel later in John chapter 20, Jesus appears to the 12 to alleviate their distrust of the situation and also to unite them to become a well-organized church. Today's reading draws at, lo at least two things out of John's background 
and place them center stage. It repeatedly stresses the physical character of what he calls the, <coughs> excuse me, the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands. And each one of these verbs are in what is called the perfect tense. And what that means, it indicates that a past reality, what something that has already happened, keeps extending into the future. So it doesn't stop. It extends all the way into the reader's present, which includes us even some 2,000 years later, I guess. And the other main concern is the importance of genuine re relationship, partnership, fellowship, is the word used in today's reading, with the community of Christ, the church. And that stems from the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. In theory, this is a simple theme, and it runs all the way through 1 John. In practice, we will soon learn that congregation experienced a split because of a disagreement about who Jesus is and why Jesus came and other false teachings that have worked their way into the church. The assurance that the author gives in verse 5 is, this is the message that we have heard from Jesus and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Light is a metaphor for truth, darkness a metaphor for lies. And then the author gives a series of contrasting hypothetical situations, indicating that no one can walk in darkness while belonging to Jesus, and the ones who walk in the light will demonstrate this fellowship, this relationship, this partnership with one another, which we have come to call the body of Christ. We also have two statements that we once used as part of Sunday morning confession, verses 8 and 9. See if these sound familiar. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And this understanding is important because no matter how truthful the gospel that we all have received, all Christians are capable of both clear-eyed remorse or repentance and self-deluded unrighteousness, sin. And this reading provides images of forgiveness and comfort. We cannot fool God. We cannot fool Jesus by thinking that we can hide our sins against one another from them. Easter, the season we're in, is God's refusal to leave the world in a lurch. The risen Jesus promises to reclaim us and everyone else for that relationship with God to walk in the light. Thank you for joining me today as we continue this week's journey toward the second Sunday of Easter, uh, April 11th, 2021. I hope you're having a great day. Take care and God bless.